This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, I'm going to calculate the angle between two vectors. And in our first section, I'm going to show you what the formula looks like. In our second section, we're going to take a look at an example. And then in our third section, we'll take a look at even another example. Now, it turns out that MathGuide does have a lot of vector uh, material that you can benefit from. If you go to mathguide.com, you click on our lessons. What you're going to want to do is here click on trigonometry. And if you scroll down, it's going to look a little quickly as I scroll down, but if you scroll down, eventually what you're going to do is you're going to get into the section of vectors. And you can see that we have tons of material on like let's say horizontal and vertical components, adding subtracting vectors, calculating the magnitude or direction, and then we even have lessons on engineering, notation, unit vectors, dot product, and projections. We have interactive quizzes, we've got videos, and of course we just have the lessons themselves. Alright, let's get to our first section. So before we do examples, let's get the setup going. If we're given two vectors, and we know the vectors, uh, their component, components of the vectors, which means we know their horizontal and vertical components, horizontal, horizontal and vertical component of the second vector, and the two vectors are u and v. So if we're given these two vectors and we want to find the angle between them, we use this equation. And you can see on the left side of the equation, we've got the cosine of the angle. On the right side of the equation, we have a fraction. And we're taking the dot product between the two vectors in the numerator. And then we're finding the magnitudes of the two vectors in the denominator, and then taking their product. If you don't know how to do the dot product, it will be explained. If you don't know how to calculate the magnitude of the vector, that will also be explained. Okay, so we're going to see that in our next two sections. All right, let's say we're given these two vectors and we want to determine the angle between the two vectors. All right, so how do you do it? Well, the first thing I would do is I would start throwing this information into the formula. Okay, so what I'm supposed to do is find, of course, the dot product between the two vectors. How do you find the dot product? So I'm supposed to multiply their horizontal components together. Then I'm supposed to multiply the vertical components together. Okay, that is how you calculate dot product. In other words, multiply these two, multiply those two, and find the sum. That's the dot product between two vectors. Uh, okay, and now I've got to find the magnitude of the two vectors and multiply. Now, what most people do is they quickly sketch these. Like, for instance, if I went 8 to the right and 15 up, I might get something that looks like this. Okay, so the vector would be over here. Think of this being like the origin. Okay, so here's my x and y axis there. And I went 8 to the right and 15 up. Now, of course, what I would use is the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse. That's what the magnitude is. The magnitude is this length here, which is the hypotenuse. That's how we find the length of the vector. Now, of course, um, most people would recognize this. Instead of taking 8 squared plus 15 squared and then setting that equal to some value squared, it's the Pythagorean theorem, right? But... It turns out that this is a family. It is the 8, 15, 17. And I'm going to make use of that. Okay, so I'm going to make use of the 8, 15, 17 and realize, hey, the magnitude of this vector u is 17. Uh, I do have a video on Pythagorean theorem. I'll put that into the uh, comment section, as I will with all the other uh, links I have to all the vector lessons and videos that I have. Okay, so uh, let's get to the next vector. Okay, so our next vector is 3 to the right, 4 down. So 
if I was at the origin, I would go three right, I would go four down, and I would get a vector that looks like this. Okay, now picture those distances are just three and four, right? The negative just un, uh, indicates direction, okay? But if this is a three, four, well, I want to figure out what the hypotenuse is. Well, most people recognize that this is a three, four, five triangle. So therefore, the length of the hypotenuse, which is just the length of the vector, the length of the vector is five. Okay, so that's what the setup looks like. So what do we do with this thing? Well, we start to clean up. So here, this is 24. Uh, this is 60. Uh, okay, I'm going to multiply 17 times 5, and that's 85. So we're just slowly cleaning this up. Okay, I'm going to subtract those, and I'm going to get negative 36 in our numerator over 85. Okay, now that's as simple as I'm going to be able to get. And now what I like to do is get rid of the cosine. I like to get the theta, or in other words, the angle. So what do you do? Well, in this situation, to get rid of cosine, you do the inverse cosine. Okay, so I'm going to take the inverse cosine of negative 36 over 85. And if I do that, the calculator gives me an answer. And the calculator gives me 115.06 degrees. And there you go. There's the angle between the two vectors. All right, let's go on to another example. Here's our second example of finding the angle between two vectors. So here I've got two vectors. Again, what I'm going to do is throw this in the formula. Okay, so the formula says that I should take the dot product between the two vectors. How do you do that? Well, I multiply the horizontal components together. And so let's see, I'm going to multiply 5 times 6. Okay, then I find the, uh, oops, then I find the magnitude of this vector. Okay, so if I were to find the magnitude of the vector, um, I'm going to go 3 left, and I'm going to go 5 up. Oops, you know what, let's do that a little bit better. I'm going to go 3 left and 5 up, assuming that this is the origin, right? So I'm going 3 left and 5 up. Okay, so how do you find the hypotenuse? Now remember, this is Pythagoras, so you're going to go negative 3 or 3 squared if you prefer. Oops, or 3 squared. And you're going to do 5 squared, right? Pythagorean theorem, which is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So I don't want the hypotenuse squared. I want the hypotenuse. So what do you do? You take the square root of both sides. So this is really going to be what the hypotenuse is. So if you clean this up, this is 9 plus 25. 9 plus 25 is, let's see, that's got to be 34. So there you go. That's the magnitude of that vector. In other words, just length of the hypotenuse. Because the vector looks like this, right? An arrow going from the origin. Okay, so what does the next one look like? It's uh, starting at the origin. I would have to go 10 right and 6 up. So it looks something like this, right? There's the arrowhead. And you'd say, okay, well, how do I calculate the magnitude? Well, I take 10 squared plus 6 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. I don't want the hypotenuse squared, so you take the square root. So this is 100 plus 36. That's 136. All right, so I'm now going to put these magnitudes here. So I'm going to take square root of 34 times the square root of 136. Okay, now it looks like a beast worse than our last example. But if you look at this numerator, something's going to happen. Okay, so I'm not even going to really mess with cleaning up the denominator because I'm seeing something in the numerator. So the numerator adds to be 0. I've got quite the mess in the de denominator. 
Okay, so I've got these uh, radicals. If I take zero divided by whatever this is, some horrible irrational value, that's just going to be zero. So continuing on, I get the cosine of some angle is equal to zero. Now you think, the cosine of what angle is equal to zero? Well, the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero. Okay, and there you go. Now, if you knew anything about vectors, you would know that there is a relationship that you need to know. That anytime you take the dot product between two vectors, and if their dot product is equal to zero, then it will they'll always have an angle of 90 degrees. As a matter of fact, we say that they would be perpendicular, or if we were using the correct language of vectors, we would even use the word orthogonal, that these are orthogonal vectors. Okay, that's all there is to it. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our text-based lessons, our interactive quizzes, and of course our instructional videos. And Please make sure to give us a, a like, like the video, and why not subscribe? We've got some great math education videos for you. All right, take care.